Blacks know more about white folks than they know about themselves. My grandmother was born in 1903 and she stuck around until she was 95 years old. By the time I came along, she was 75 years old, but I still had 20 years with her. She worked as a housekeeper for white people for most of her life and she always, always told me that. She always said, baby, we know more about them people than they know about themselves. And one of the many reasons for this is because we had to survive white people. Think about it like this. When somebody has a nut allergy, they know more about what products are processed in plants that are also processing nuts than the rest of us do. They also know how to operate EpiPens more efficiently than the rest of us do. Because when something is a threat to your life, you are acutely aware of all the details that come along with that. And that's what white people are and were and are to us. A threat to our lives. Shalom. Kohlaim la Yahweh b'Hashem Yahweh Shai b'Hashem Rukah Kadash. All praises be to the Most High, Yahweh, in the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, and pushing this gospel. Throughout the four corners of the earth, salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad, and double honor and respect to the elders and to the apostles and great millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson, a little bit about our forefather Jacob. So when we go into that word Jacob, our forefather, it's a club in the Hebrew, and it means to supplant or supplanter. So Jacob was full of wisdom. This is where we hear the term, which is really a derogatory term, Jake the snake. I know many of you have heard that, and you'll never guess where that phrase comes from. It comes from those that are in the know. They know who Jacob is. So-called Negroes, Native Americans, and Latinos, our forefather. So I want to go into something. Wisdom is cunning. That's why the ancients used a serpent to represent the wise or the elite. Let's go to Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 10. <clears throat> We're going to Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 10, verse 9. Let's go to verse 8. For regarding not wisdom, they get not only this hurt, that they knew not the things which were good, but also left behind them to the world a memorial of their foolishness, so that in the things wherein they offended, they could not so much as be hid. But wisdom delivered from pain those that attended upon her. When the righteous fled from his brother's wrath, she guided him in right paths, showed him the kingdom of God, and gave him knowledge of holy things, made him rich in his travails, and multiplied the fruit of his labors, made him rich in his travels. So Jacob became wealthy which really started with his knowledge and wisdom and understanding. The Bible says the more, the more wise they are, the more humble. Let's go ahead and get it. I think it's Sirach 3. And let's, let's get it. Sirach chapter 3, right here. Sirach 3, verse 18. The greater thou art, the more humble thyself, and thou shalt find favor before the Lord. Many are in high places. Verse 19, many are in high place and of renown, but mysteries are revealed unto the meek. For the power of the Lord is great, and he is honored of the lowly. So Jacob would do this before the face of his brother 
Esau. So he used wisdom. He applied knowledge in dealing with his brother Esau because Jacob understood. <coughs> Jacob understood it was not his time to rule yet. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 10, verse 9. But wisdom delivered from pain those that attended upon her when the righteous fled from his brother's wrath. She guided him in right paths, showed him the kingdom of God, and gave him knowledge of holy things, made him rich in his travels, and multiplied the fruit of his labors. In the covetousness of such as oppress him, she stood by him and made him rich. She defended him from his enemies and kept him safe from those that lay in wait. And in a sore conflict, she gave him the victory that he might know that goodness is stronger than all. So Jacob is going to be protected and guided by the Holy Spirit. It's kind of interesting when you watch these old movies. They're trying to insinuate the Holy Spirit when they go into some of these sayings like Luke. May the force be with you. Go with the force. And Luke represented a son of light. So the guiding light or the guiding spirit really is the Holy Spirit that gives us a light or a well-lit path to follow. And when the righteous was sold, she forsook him not, but delivered him from sin she went down with him into the pit. See? <clears throat> so the power is with the lowly, the meek and the humble that are giving access to the mysteries of the kingdom. Wisdom, Wisdom of Solomon 10 and 14 and left him not in bonds till she brought him the scepter of the kingdom and power against those that oppress him. As for them that had accused him, she showed them to be liars and gave him perpetual glory. I want to go here on how Jacob used cunning craftiness in dealing with his brother Esau. Let's go to Genesis 28. <clears throat> I'm going to go to the book of Genesis, chapter 28. One moment. Let me make sure this is where I want to go. No, not there. I'm tripping. Okay, right here. Genesis 33. I'm exhausted. <clears throat> Genesis 33, verse 1. And Jacob lifted up his eyes and looked. And behold, Esau came and with him 400 men. And he divided the children unto Leah and unto Rachel and unto the two handmaids. So Jacob had already learned of his mother that Esau Esau was intending to kill him. So he already knew this. Rebecca had told him off to the side, like, look, your brother Esau is looking to take your life. So keep that in mind. And Jacob lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, Esau came and with him 400 men, and he divided the children unto Leah and unto Rachel and unto the 200 handmaids. 
and unto the two handmaids, excuse me, and he put the handmaids and their children foremost, and Leah and her children after, and Rachel and Joseph hindermost. And he passed over before them and bowed himself to the ground seven times until he came near to his brother. So Jacob is in survival mode. He knows how to survive. Now, what else does he know? He understands that his brother Esau has a God complex about him, wanting to be worshipped, reverence, wanting to be validated. So Jacob already has the upper hand in knowing his enemy. And he passed over before them and bowed himself to the ground seven times until he came near to his brother. And Esau ran to meet him and embrace him and fell on his neck and kissed him and they wept. Now this will look like a love story looking at this from a distance. But really it's about knowing our time and place. Knowing our time and place, knowing the environment that we're in, knowing the threat, knowing our enemies, and most importantly, knowing, knowing ourselves. And Esau ran to meet him and embrace him and fell on his neck and kissed him and they wept. And he lifted up his eyes and saw the women and the children and said, Who are those with thee? And he said, The children which the Most High have graciously given thy servant. So Jacob is taking on the role of a servant, just like Yahweh our Lord and Savior did. <coughs> See? Same bloodline. Moving with craftiness and cunningness and not being lifted up with pride. Then the handmaidens came near, they and their children, and they bowed themselves. Now what man wants to kill his own servants? So this is a cunning tactic or strategy to apply to this situation. <clears throat> Verse 7, Genesis 33, verse 7. And Leah also with her children came near and bowed themselves. And after came Joseph near and Rachel, and they bowed themselves. And he said, What meanest thou by all this drove which I met? And he said, These are to find grace in the sight of my Lord. Now he's calling Esau his Lord. Let me go here. <clears throat> Let's go to First Samuel 25 and 23. And when Abigail saw David, she hasted and lighted off the ass, and fell before David on her face, and bowed herself to the ground, and fell at his feet, and said, Upon me, my Lord, upon me, let this iniquity be, and let thine handmaid, I pray thee, speak in thine audience, and hear the words of thy handmaid. Thy servant. See, so your wish is my command. So Abigail eventually married the king. But the key point here is taking on the role of a servant. Humility. Attracting more bees with honey rather than vinegar. So Abigail applied wisdom. For survival. 
<clears throat> Genesis 33, verse 8, and he said, What meanest thou by all this which I met? And he said, These are to find grace in the sight of my Lord. And Esau said, I have enough, my brother. Keep that thou hast unto thyself. And Jacob said, Nay, I pray thee, if now I have found grace in thy sight, then receive my present at my hand. For therefore I have seen thy face as though I had seen the face of God, and thou was pleased with me. So Jacob is very wise. He knows that Esau has a God complex. I mean, many of us have watched these movies where the slave bows down and constantly says, yes, master, pours the water for his master and appears weak, but their strength in being able to subdue ourselves, temperance, patience, humility, meekness. So this is heavy. <clears throat> and knowing our enemy, by knowing what he leans on, then that becomes a point in which to exploit or take advantage of. Knowing he needs to be validated, Jacob plays on his conscience to validate him. <clears throat> so our lusts become our vulnerabilities. Let's read this again. Take, I pray thee, my blessing that is brought to thee, because God hath dealt graciously with me, and because I have enough. And he urged him, and he took it. Let's go back to verse 10. And Jacob said, Nay, I pray thee, if now I have found grace in thy sight, then receive my present at my hand, for therefore I have seen thy face as though I had seen the face of God, and thou was pleased with me. So Jacob understands his enemy. Let's go here. See, <clears throat> it shows that he had great fear. Let's go to Genesis 32, verse, verse 6. The messengers returned to Jacob, saying, We came to thy brother Esau, and also he cometh to meet thee, and four hundred men with him. So Esau had men that were ready to shed blood with him. Then Jacob was greatly afraid and distressed, and he divided the people that was with him and the flocks and herds and the camels into two bands and said, If Esau come to the one company and smite it, then the other company which is left shall escape. And Jacob said, O God of my father Abraham and power of my father Isaac, the Lord which says unto me, Return unto thy country and to thy kindred, and I will deal well with thee. So he's praying, Lord, you said you would be with me. You would watch over me. You would keep me, protect me. Verse 10, I am not worthy of the least of all the mercies and of all the truth which thou hast showed unto thy servant. For with my staff I pass over this Jordan and now I am become two bands. Deliver me, I pray thee, from the hand of my brother, from the hand of Esau, for I fear him, lest he will come and smite me and the mother with the children. And thou saidest, I will surely do thee good and make thy seed as the sand of the sea, 
which cannot be numbered for multitude. So what's interesting about this is, guess what? The Lord steered Jacob into a humble servant. Jacob did not make that decision to do that. So after he prayed, even before he prayed, the Lord gave him a wholesome spirit of humility. Let's close out with that one. Let's go here first. Sirach 25, verse 5. Oh, how calmly is the wisdom of old men and understanding and counsel to men of honor. See, the higher thou art, the more humble thou should be. We read that in Sirach 3. <clears throat> Let's get one more. Sirach 1 and 15. <clears throat> Sirach 1, verse 15. She had built, let's go to 14. To fear the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and it was created with the faithful in the womb. So before Jacob was formed in the womb, the Most High steered his heart, his spirit, and shaped it to be humble, meek, wise, Verse 15, she had built an everlasting foundation with men and shall continue with their seed to fear the Lord is full. <laughs> Verse Sirach 1 and 16, to fear the Lord is fullness of wisdom and filleth men with her fruits. Let's get one more. <clears throat> I'm going to go to Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 11. Let's go to 16. Proverbs 16. Right here. Verse 1. The preparations of the heart in men and the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. The Lord caused Jacob to call Esau Lord, to bow down to him to compare his face as having seen the face of God. Subtility, cunningness, craftiness leads to longevity. See, all of the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes, but the Lord weigheth the spirits. Where is that at when a man's ways, please? Let's jump down here. See? So rock, I mean, Proverbs 16, verse 7. When a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. So Esau made peace or did not commit massive slaughter on Jacob, his wives, and his children. See, Proverbs 16 and 9. A man's heart deviseth his way, but the Lord direct his steps. So Jacob was under the direction, under the instruction of the heavenly divine, the Holy Spirit. This is beautiful. So the Lord, the Lord is like, I got you. I got you, Jake. <clears throat> See? See? Right here. So es Esau was being controlled too by the Spirit, not to offend. Genesis 33, verse 9. And Esau said, I have enough, my brother. Keep that that thou hast unto thyself. 
And Jacob said, Nay, I pray thee, if now I have found grace in thy sight, then receive my present at my hand. For therefore I have seen thy face, as though I had seen the face of God, and thou was pleased with me. See? This is beautiful. Let's jump now to verse 15. And Esau said, Let me now leave with thee some of the folk that are with me. And he said, What need of it? Let me find grace in the sight of my Lord. So Esau returned that day on his way unto Seir. So Esau left in peace without shedding blood. So Jacob is the former of all things. So he knows what's going on in the minds of Esau and the other nations from a spiritual perspective. Hopefully this lesson has been edifying. All praises to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai Bahashem, Kadash. Double honor and respect to the others and to the apostles of Great Millstone. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. Come your Sharala. And abide the ball. We got next, Lord willing. So Jacob's name means supplanter or Yaqab, to supplant or supplanter. So this is where we have heard that derogatory term, Jake the Snake. So, wisdom is cunning, patient, and temperate, and slow to anger. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. Shalom.